Okay, let's talk about the basics of rhythm today. So we're gonna be throwing out a few definitions here that are really going to be easy to remember and really what we're going to be talking about here is the duration of a note. So we've already talked uh, just a little bit, we've we kind of glanced the subject in regards to intervals, which is the distance between two musical notes. And what we mean by the distance is we mean the musical pitch distance, not the distance in time. So normally when we're talking about an interval of time, we're talking about a second or a minute or an hour and that sort of thing. But when we're talking about intervals in music, we're talking about the distance in pitches. So a low pitch and a high pitch, and there's a certain distance there. That was an octave that I just sang. But, um, but here we're gonna be talking about, today we're gonna be talking about rhythm. And we're gonna be talking about these notes that you're going to run across a lot in future videos and when you're talking with other musicians, when you're reading literature, when you're reading musical notation as we talk about in the course and a bunch of other stuff, you're gonna need to know these basic definitions, okay? And some of these you probably have heard about already and if you hadn't, that's totally fine too because we're gonna talk about all of them. Now, when we're talking about music, we like, musicians like to put things in bite-sized pieces, okay? Phrases, choruses, bridges, um, verses, measures, phrases. Did I say phrases already? Solos, like basically they're sections, just like in anything. And it's, it's great to be able to say, hey, this particular section, okay? Well, one subdivision of that is called measures. And so as musicians, we break things up into measures. You've probably seen this before when you're looking at music and you see these lines that separate. Every few beats, you'll see a line and then more notes and then a line and more notes. And usually what that does is that is saying, we've got four beats here, okay? And that's a, an amount of time that's represented there, okay? So now we're talking about time, okay? And so a measure, a full measure, will typically, if we're talking about a song in four, which is like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's talk about that really quick before we get into these measures. Uh, you know, most songs are in four. Now we can have a song that's in six, which goes oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know? And there's a myriad of other different time signatures, but honestly, in four and six is what you're going to be using 99.9% .9 of the time. There's a very, very small amount of music that uses, you know, five or seven or nine or some odd time signature. And that's what we call them. We call them odd time signatures or mixed time signatures. You just aren't going to use them very often. So we could talk about them here, but I just don't think it's really necessary for you to understand what they are right now. You're just rarely ever gonna run into them, okay? So we're gonna be talking about four, four today. And the, a lot of these concepts can, be, can apply towards six as well, six time which is what we call six, eight. But suffice to say, four time would be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, where the accent is every four beats instead of six beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, or three, where it's just one, two, three, one, two, three. There's a ton of songs that you've heard that are in three, six, and more, a lot more that are in four. So if I played these songs for you, you'd say, oh yeah, I know that feel. I know what that feels like. So you know this inherently, but we're gonna be talking about the details here today, okay? So when we have a measure, we have notes that are on there, that are on that measure, and they need to equal, when we're talking about four, four time, or what we're just calling four, those notes need to equal four quarter beats or four quarter notes, okay? You can think about it like a dollar. A, uh, a measure you could say is a dollar, okay? And you could subdivide that into half dollar, two half dollars, or four quarters, okay? What we call quarter notes. Or you could put eight eighth notes in there or 16 sixteenth notes 
or 32 30 second notes and you can keep going 64 and on and on now we're getting as we're doing that obviously the notes have to be twice as fast this is going to make more sense when i'm actually playing this okay so let's say we have a measure and it's going one two three four one two three four by the way that's called our tempo how fast the beats are going. So we have a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's a faster tempo than one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? So the tempo is how fast those beats are going by, kind of like a heartbeat. So when we're talking about whole steps, I'm sorry, when we're talking about whole beats, okay, we have or or, or whole notes. We have whole notes We've got quarter notes, we've got eighth notes, and so on, okay? When we're talking about whole notes, it's represented as a circle. We're gonna get more into that in musical notation. Right now, we just wanna know how one sounds. Basically, a whole note will take the whole measure, okay? So, if I'm counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I'm hitting an E chord, then it would go like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So I'm strumming on the one and holding out for the rest of the measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Now, if we wanted to cut that in half, we'd have to put two notes in the same time, in the same measure. So in that case, we would have to strum on the one and the three. So here we go. So one, two, three. These are half notes because two halves make a whole. So we take that half and this other half and that makes a whole measure or also known as a whole note, okay? Not also known as a whole note, I should say that the whole note is equal to a measure in this case here, okay? So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And of course, if we wanted to do quarter notes, two, three, then we'd, we'd strum every time we have a number. One, two, hand is coming is going down and up we're just choosing not to strike the strings on the way up but if we did those would be eighth notes okay we keep on subdividing so you remember basic fractions from school you know we've got quarter notes now so four quarters equal a whole in the case of the eighth notes eight eighth notes equal a whole and in that case here, we would strum up also. So instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, instead of that, we'd go one and two and three and four, and 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 or we could just mute this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And Okay, those are eighth notes. Now we could even subdivide that again. One and two and three and four and one and two. And we'd have to move our hand twice as fast and it would go like this. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and. So it sounds like I'm speaking some other language, right? What I'm saying is one e and duh. It's just a way that musicians over the years have said let's subdivide the beat you know syllabically with syllables let's do this by saying one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, usually emphasizing or accenting the number so we got one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, okay and we could double that up. We could have, um, you know, well, in that case, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. If we wanted to do sixteenth note or thirty second notes, we'd have to double that yet. Okay, and we're just not going to run into that very often. In fact, when we're talking about strumming, usually you're going to run into whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, 
and 16th notes. Really anything past that we really don't use very often. So we'd probably use it as much as we would use those odd time signatures. So again, in order for us to push through and really learn guitar in a way that, that makes a lot of sense, uh, we have to take some things out and we can learn them later, that's okay, but honestly, you're rarely ever going to play 30 second notes when you're strumming. I mean, I don't know if I've ever done that, to be honest with you. So, um, with that being said, these are the only th three th or three or four that we need. Whole steps, or, or so whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. <sighs> whole notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. There we go, right? Is that right? Yeah, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth. Sorry, there's five of them. That took me that took me a second, all right? But nonetheless, that's all we need, okay? We, we're just not going to use the 30-second notes. I guess I need more caffeine, all right? All right, so now your whole notes are going to be strummed down, you know, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Your half notes will be strummed down. Your quarter notes will be strummed down. Your eighth notes will be strummed down up, respectively. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, one, two, one, two, one. So in the way we count this, we could count it one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Since there's eight eighth notes, we could count it like that. But most musicians will count it one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And I'm saying and in between each one of those. So now, homework, the takeaway from this. This is what I want you to do. We're gonna be getting into some strumming here coming up, but we might as well go ahead and dip our feet in the water a little bit here, okay? What I want you to do after this video is I want you to take your hand and lay it on the strings as light as a feather so that you get that sound. And I mean light as a feather. You want it to just be like a, a damp sponge laying on the strings, okay? Just like that. We don't want this, that sound. The reason that we're doing this is we're taking something out so that we're not being distracted. This is a great way to learn, okay? So you wanna take, take that part out of it, you trying to play a chord. Right now we wanna just concentrate all of our energy into what our strumming hand is doing. And I want you to just get acclimated to this so that if someone asks you what a 16th note is, or a whole note, or a half note, or an eighth note, that you're, or a quarter, you're able to just pull those off right away, okay? Now, this is gonna take a little bit of counting on your part and a little bit of strumming. And I know we haven't done any strumming yet, but really the objective here is that you're taking your pick and you're hitting all the strings, okay? This doesn't take a ton of brain power, but you'll have to concentrate a bit. That's why we're leaving the fretting hand out for right now. And what I want you to do is I want you to, to do this enough to where you're comfortable with it. So for instance, with the whole notes, I want you to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, for so important that you actually say the notes. You one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? And then half notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then quarter notes. Then eighth notes. Sixteenth, you may not be able to do one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and if you slow it down you will be able to do it. So start off at a nice slow tempo so that when you do get to the 16th notes, you can do this. And make sure that you're counting, and when you're counting, really try to count out loud. Now, if you're embarrassed, if you're with other people where you gotta keep it down or something, you can count in your head, but make sure you really are counting in your head. You're not just ignoring it and just letting your hand strum where you think that one is. It's so important to start counting today, right now. Start counting because you're counting is basically building a, a drum machine or a metronome within you that's gonna help keep you in time when you're playing all sorts of music, okay? So you're gonna count all the way through all of these. The whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. Just think, you're gonna keep subdividing the beat. That's all you have to think about. There's not a lot of rocket science. We don't need a handout for this. We just keep subdividing the, the beat. 
okay? And if you're counting one, two, three, four, you know that's every four beats, then you know a half note's every two beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If that's two beats, you know a quarter beats every single beat. And if we know that eighth note is half of that, we subdivide it again. And you're counting here, one and two and three and four and, okay? When it comes to the 16th notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. In that case, we do have to double up our speed, um, our, our, our strumming here, okay? So that's your homework. You know what to do. Please don't go on to the next video until you practice this just a little bit because what we keep doing is we're stacking information on top of each other and if you forget one you're building an unsteady house okay remember we're building our foundation and our core here so really important that you do the exercises before moving on to the next video now you don't have to practice it for days or anything like that just get the concept get the feel for it you can always go back if you mess up or if you are unsure but definitely don't purposefully skip it that would not be good okay let's keep going